This is Anthony Anarino, and you're listening to In the Arena. Hey, this is Anthony Anarino, and I am in Orlando, Florida with the family. It's January 1st, and I can't think of a better way to start off 2014 than with a podcast with Hector Lamarck, who is the National Sales Director of Primerica. It's really weird. I got an email one day from one of the people that's on his team, and all it did is gave me a phone number. And I called the phone number, and each week Hector does a call for his sales team, and this call was him reading part of a blog post I had written and riffing on it. And he does that from time to time and takes whatever I've written and expands upon it and explains why it's important to his team and why it's important to salespeople generally. And it's just amazing and awesome. So I asked Hector to join us here to talk to you. And uh, it's awesome too. You're going to love it. It's a great way to start your year. And I promise you, you're going to listen to this five times. Good afternoon, Hector. How are you? Hi, Anthony. I'm very, very well. How are you doing? I'm wonderful, and I'm thrilled to have you here for one particular reason, which I haven't shared with you, but you'll guess what it is. It's just mindset. You're you're such a good example of mindset for salespeople, and some of your force has actually sent me recordings of you reading one of my blog posts and then just riffing on it, sometimes for 30 minutes. And I've been enthralled listening to it, going, this is awesome, listening to somebody take this idea and share it as deeply and as passionately as you do. And you're so passionate about what you do. But before we do that, let me ask you, people who are listening to this may or may not know who you are. So just a little bit of background. And I'm going to ask you to go way back, because I think the mindset started uh, a long time ago. So take me back as far as you can. And where'd you get that mindset? And, And how did you become successful where you are now? Well, you know, I, I started really when I was uh, probably in high school. I was uh, the kind of the, I think, kind of the foundation of kind of the, de- the mindset I've developed over the years is when I was in high school, I, I played um, I played all the sports, played basketball, football, baseball, but basketball was actually my real sport. And um, I didn't start playing until I was a sophomore and I played on the B basketball team, which was kind of like the guys that weren't good enough to play JVs or varsity. So, and I did well. Uh, and then the next year I went out for the varsity team and the coach was asking everybody, you know, what asking each player, which, you know, what are you going out for varsity or, or junior varsity? They got to me and asked me and I said, varsity and, uh, coming from where I was coming from, it was ridiculous. So everybody started laughing at me, all my peers. And so, I got pissed, <laughs> and uh, you know, because you have a choice. I always talk about this. You have a choice. You can either, you know, agree with them and you know go uh, hide in the closet, or you can, you know, you can fight, which is what I decided to do. So I started practicing like crazy and became a, a complete, um, you know, had a basketball Jones, and I ended up making the team. And then my varsity, my senior year, I actually was a captain of my varsity basketball team. I went on and played college basketball. And then I did the thing, same thing again in college. I played. Uh, I didn't play tennis. Uh, my freshman year, I took a tennis class. Got beat by this female tennis player really badly, and I went, "This is this can't happen." <laughs> and so I, I did the same thing. I started playing tennis like crazy and studied it and read every book and watched tennis. And uh, by the time I was a senior, I played. Uh, I was number one on my varsity tennis team, and I and I was MVP and. So I, those two things were foundational because what it taught me is that when you make a decision and you work at it like crazy, like maniacally in my case, you know, you know, massive, massive practice that you can do anything. And so then I just took that same mentality into my business life when I when I started in business 
And my first job out of college was in the jewelry business. I was a, I have a degree in psychology. I was going to be a clinical psychologist, and I needed the job when I graduated. I was married and had a baby, and and I needed a job, so I started doing that. Sell. I went into the jewelry business, and I went to the bookstore and bought you know four or five books on sales. Read every single one of them back to front, and started implementing you know the techniques. Uh, that I learned there. You know, what what did you read? Three. Do you know what you read? Uh, Frank Benger's How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success. You Great know, book. Benger, right? book uh, Tom Hopkins. I'm a very big Tom Hopkins. He's a very good friend of mine, and we've done a lot of work together over the years. And so I've read all. I read everything. Probably over the last thirty years, I've probably read fifteen hundred books on personal development. And so I did really well. Uh, right away, and then I got recruited into the business I'm in now. Pause and there, because I want to go back further. You were a rich kid, silver spoon, um, right? And and now, so yeah. this this hustle, you got the hustle, and I got that. I know, and I've listened to you talk, so I know this. The hustle started before that, though. And and I I love Tony Robbins. He always says inspiration or desperation. Uh, right. w- when did you realize that you had to do something? Well, I, I mean, I did. I grew up. I'm the fifth of seven children. My my, you know, father is a Mexican immigrant with a third grade education, and I grew up in a thousand square foot home with nine people in it, and uh, five five of them were women in a bathroom uh, the size of a closet, you know, really tiny. And so, you know, was, I, I didn't think any of it when I was growing up, but I mean, looking back, it's you know, especially going back and revisiting my folks' home and stuff is just amazing. And I just decided I didn't, I didn't want to be poor. I didn't want to live that way. I wanted to do something different. And, and uh, education for me was the way out. I've always been a voracious reader. And um, I just decided I wanted to, to be somebody, I guess, you know, and, and I did the work to make that happen, which is what very few people ever do. Everybody wants that to happen. Yeah. But they don't, they're not willing to do the work to make it happen. Oh, kind of what what wanting is what everybody wants. Yeah, you know, but the willingness to do the work is where the action is, and I mean that's the story, and I I I hear it in your words. I mean, you when you don't have a lot of choices, you you learn to hustle because that's that's your choice. I'm going to have to outwork people. I'm going to have to outthink you. I'm going to have to study harder. I'm going to have to play harder. And if you're willing to do that, the results come. Yeah, it's always in the preparation. You know, I, that's what I teach constantly. And I know you do too. I mean, I, I love your stuff. I mean, one of the reasons I use your stuff all the time, all those blogs that you post, I, I, I call my primaricorize them, you know, I, I take them and then I, because it's all the stuff I've learned and taught and, you know, none of, no, to me, none of it's really new, but it's, it's, Hey, just, come uh, on. This right. is all brand new stuff. These, uh, <laughs> thinking your, your thinking is, is, is I, I can't believe we're kindred souls, you know I mean? It's exactly the way I operate. So it's, it, it works really well for me and I appreciate your work. I appreciate what you've done and what you're doing. It's, it's really impactful. Well, thank you. I mean, it's uh, it's the fundamental truths, isn't it? I mean, and that's why there's nothing original there. And it's uh, it's my take, like it's your take on what's true and real as as evidenced by being a practitioner. You know, it works because you're out doing it. Yeah, you know, everything I teach is not is not theoretical. It's actually what I've done. And yeah, how I've done, and uh, I'm sure you're the same. Yeah, I'm a I'm a practitioner. So now, fast forward to Primerica. How do you get there? And then I want to I want you to walk people through what what you've built, and and sort of how you came to that. Yeah, well, what happened? Um, I was in the jewelry business, and I had just I had opened three jewelry stores for this small regional company, and uh, I had just opened a, a new store. I've been working sixty to eighty hours a week, and and I needed three hours off for my son's uh, fifth birthday. My son's now thirty five, and. You know, went to graduate from Wharton Business School and is in is a partner in a in a hedge fund now. But back then he was turning five, and I needed um, three hours off, and my boss wouldn't give it to me. He, he said, "No, I need you to work because I'll lose money if you're not there." <laughs> and I was, and, and when that happened, I was so angry. I just I made a decision right there. This was in 1983. I made a decision right there. I would never, ever, ever work for somebody again. I just wouldn't do it. I don't care if I had to work 15 hour days, seven days a week. There's no way I would ever have another human being have the ability to say I couldn't spend time with my family or I couldn't do something. So that was just one of those for, you know, kind of 
straw that broke the camel's back moments for me. And, uh, and then this, then this gentleman, um, actually this gal that was my, um, office manager at the store I had been working at her father was in the business in Primerica. It was called Ale Wims at that time, but he was in that business and he came and talked to me and I wasn't ready to do it then. After this happened, then I, I called him up and his name was John. I said, John, I'm, I'm ready to get started. And that's how I got started. So I got, actually got started in January of 1984. Straight commission, did, right? Straight commission, but I, was, I was, did it part-time for a year. Made, in 1984, I made 18000 part-time. The next year, I went full-time. I made 35000 My in- income actually went down because I was making about fifty five at my job. and So I'd made about 73000 in 1983. In the 1980, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 84. In 1985, I made thirty five. My income actually dropped in half. And, uh, but, but I was learning, I was learning how to do the business and, and the next year, 86, I made 86,000. I started getting very good at it and I started getting very good at teaching people. 87, my income jumped to 409,000 and 88, it jumped to 855,000 and I've been paid about $65 million over the last, you know, 30 odd years. That's why I was calling you because I wanted to talk about a loan and, uh, I thought this would be the appropriate yeah, and so really that gap, that 35 to the 86, <clears throat> the going down the $20,000, there's your education, right? Yeah, you know, and, and the, the thing is, is I, <clears throat> I was starting out, so you don't, in any business, you know, you're in sales, you don't start off at the top, you, you work your way up, you figure how things work, and then you, you know, and in our business, my business, it's developing people, that's what I became very adept at doing is developing people. And I've developed a lot of very successful people over the years. And um, the key is, uh, you know, it's, it's distribution. How, how many successful people in uh, Primerica underneath your umbrella right now? Well, I have uh, about eight or nine that make over a million dollars a year, a couple hundred that make over a hundred thousand a year. And I've helped a lot of other people that aren't in my organization, probably helped another 15 people that have, their incomes are over half a million dollars a year. Help develop them over the years. So I've, helped, I've helped a lot of people. Tell me, tell me what you mean when you say develop people, because uh, I, I, you've had a lot of people that you've worked with that didn't get there, and then you've had some, and I would love it if you could define the difference. The ones that get there, when you say I helped them, how did you help them? Well, many more that haven't <clears throat> than have, as you know, right? I mean, it's it's just always the top, probably two percent, really, but. Uh, what, I, and what I'm saying is, really, they help themselves. They actually listen to what I teach. It's not that I did it for them, but they actually implemented the things that I talk about, the things that I teach. And, and those that have done that have done very, very well. Very <coughs> few people actually do that because it requires work, dedication, self-discipline, uh, persistence, all those things that are a rare commodity for most people. But the people that have, they have done very, very well. And uh, the you know people, the secret. Yeah. The people that haven't, though, it isn't capabilities. No, never. It's never capability. Everybody. I mean, if they can, they can speak the language. They can communicate. They can do it. They just don't have. You know, there's there's fundamentals. It's it's self discipline. I think that's probably the most. Uh, well, there's a couple of things. One, people care way too much what other people think about them. That's one of the most debilitating things I see. For people, the second thing is they don't have self-discipline. So they don't, in other words, they don't do the work on a daily basis to master their craft to be able to get great results. So by not doing, you know, not having the self-discipline, they can't get there ever. Ch- chapter right. Chapter one of the book I'm going to release in January is self-discipline: the art of me management, because it's the cornerstone for everything that follows. Right? Yeah, it, it, without that, it, you, it there's no chance for you long run. Here's here's a funny story for the, from the last couple months of me traveling around the world speaking to sales organizations. I've had this happen twice, um, very close together. But somebody was asking about you know the the my ability to write every day and to post and do the things that I'm doing in in that part of my business. And uh, they said, "Well, how do you do this?" And I said, "Well, I get up at four thirty in the morning and I write very first thing every day. It used to be five, but now I'm actually getting up earlier because I have more work to do." And in both cases, the individual I was speaking to said, I could never get up at five o'clock in the morning. And I said, I know. And they said, well, I could if I wanted to. And I said, 
I know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All you have to do is decide to do it. You just get out of bed when the alarm goes off and you sit down and it's done. It, it, you can do it the second you decide, boom, you're there. That's what it in really my, is, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. There's no question. In my business, um, there are seven fundamentals that I figured out. You know, one is in, is you've got to become a great prospector. That's number one. Number two, you've got to get great at setting appointments after you prospect. Three, you've got to be a great presenter. Four, you've got to be able to overcome all the most common, you know, areas of concern that come up. You know, from the client's perspective. Um, then you have the next one is you have to uh, know how your products work inside and out so you can you're able to sell the features and benefits and then the the, the next one is you have to be able to recruit people uh, the people that you know off off of shortfalls that they have and then the final one is you have to be able to train those people to do what the you know the six things that we just talked I just talked about and if people do that it's impossible to fail they will be successful the problem is very few people will do that. And that's kind of, you know, those people you say, why those didn't make it? Because they don't have the self-discipline to master those seven fundamentals. The ones that do win big, the ones that don't, they leave. And, but that's true in every sales business. That's not just our business. But that, that's, those are the fundamentals that I've discovered over the last 30 years that make the difference. I, I believe master. they make the difference in anything. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, it's not, it's very simple. It's just not easy. <laughs> exactly. It's work. It's work, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's that work and it's the activities that you described that actually generate results. And so I see salespeople and they live in their inbox. And I say, why do you check your email first thing in the morning? And, and why do you live there? Why do you have it up all day? Why don't you turn it off and get your real work done? And they think, well, my real work is in my inbox. Well, there's no money coming through that inbox. The money's out face to face with human beings, you know, in in our space, and it's always somewhere else in every business that I encounter. Oh, absolutely! It's not in your office, that's for sure. It's, it's not on your computer. No, it's out there. You're right. It's belly, belly to belly. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. You you came to my attention. Uh, I came to your attention before you came to mine because you were reading and riffing on the blog. So I got. Uh, just an email that said, dial this number. And I dialed the number and then it's you and, and you go, I'm reading this from Anthony and Arena, the sales blog. And I don't remember what post it was that you picked up on. And then you just launched into, I mean, this passionate, like this is what he said. And then you went on and on and on about it. And I think some of those calls are a half hour and they're just so passionate what what are you doing there? You do that to keep your the morale up, to give people guidance, to continue to touch them in training because you're doing them what weekly? Yeah, all, all those all, all those things you said. Yes, for all those same reasons. But yeah, I do them weekly. I do I do one every week. It posts on Tuesday and it runs to the following Tuesday. They're free calls, and then I then I offer them on my website. But you know, I charge ninety nine cents. I don't I don't make money that way. I make money in my business, but it's really to help people. You know, the ones that are motivated, the ones that have self-discipline, the ones that listen and actually implement what I'm talking about. And the truth is, it's all the stuff you're talking about. I, I use your stuff all the time, I, and, and your stuff is amazing. And so it just coincides to, you know, perfectly with what I'm trying to get across. It's mostly a mentality, you know. It's, it's, it's really more a mentality than anything else. It's getting people's mental frame of mind in the right place, um, you know, because you can't really teach everything in a 30 or 40 minute you know, talk, but you can point people in the right direction and get people thinking correctly. The difference between, in my experience, of people that win, you know, big and people that kind of have a mediocre existence is their thought process. And you know that. I mean, that's everything. And I, that's really kind of what I'm trying to do is, is to uh, grow people's thinking, grow their awareness level, get them to start thinking like a winner, you know, what, what winners think like. And um, when they start doing that, then then it gets pretty. And what I say to people is, is that it, when you grow your awareness, life gets fun and easy. Most people's struggles are because their awareness level is just too low for their whatever it is they're doing. I, I think that they, well, they're, they're infected for a couple reasons. They're infected by society. And you're right, they do care what other people think about them. So they look through at this lens and say, people are going to judge me and they're going to make decisions about me and it's easier to go along. And on top of that, you have society just pouring in 
the economy's bad, politics are bad, people are bad, everything's negative, you can't get ahead because the man's keeping you down, and all these other things. And so they're infected with that belief, and they don't do anything about that infection, so it's garbage in, garbage out. And what you said, that's interesting to me, um, you're looking at my big wall of books, but the right, the mindset, so you only take in 1,500 personal development books and books about growth and that make you more effective of a salesperson, pretty soon it just starts coming back out, right? So it just becomes part of who you are. I mean, everything becomes reflexive. I, th- I think the, 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 the difference between an amateur and a pro is a pro, everything's reflexive. They're not thinking, they're just operating from a, a place of knowing. And most people's, like I said, awareness level is so low, they're having to think. And I don't, you know, when you're in that, when you're in the, in the arena, you can't be thinking, you have to be, you know, just acting. And I think most people just aren't prepared enough to do that, which is why they struggle. And so I'm always talking about preparation, growing yourself, you know, improving your skill sets, improving your knowledge base. And I talk about that incessantly because that's the real key. And unless people are going to do that, they're never going to get where they really want to go. It's just not going to happen. So it's not what people really want to hear, but it's what people really need to do. And so I just never uh, let up on that and talk about it incessantly. I've heard you. Point, yeah, pointing to people like you or Maxwell or, you know, lots of different people that I've studied over the years, you know. Yeah, and there's a lot of great things out there for mindset. Absolutely. There's tons of stuff. There's no, there's no, I tell people there's no shortage. I mean, if you're serious about succeeding, there's so much information. It's, 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 it's impossible not to succeed if you're serious about doing it. One of the things that I talk about in the, I've got a chapter in the book that's going to come out next year on optimism. And one of the things that I recommend is just to, to take a complete and total negativity fast and say, I'm just not taking anything negative in at all. It means if I can't be around you, I can't be around you. I turn the news off. Don't read the newspaper, the magazine. So the world's going to keep turning even if you don't pay attention to it as it turns out. And just start pouring good things in. And it's amazing how different you feel when you only take in things that are positive. And I, I tell people, this is my strong belief, you're already brainwashed. You just have to decide whether you want to be brainwashed with negative, disempowering thoughts or whether you want to be brainwashed with empowering thoughts. And one of them's going to lead you to a great life and the other one's just going to make you miserable. So you might as well go for what works. Yeah. Oh, and there's no question about it. And, and like you said, I think it's easier. You know, I, I always have a saying, you know, if there was anything, if anything good came from being negative, I would be the most negative person on earth. <laughs> but there's nothing that comes from being negative. I haven't seen it in my lifetime that anything really good came from that. And so, you know, I've decided to be I, I made this decision a long time ago that I would be the most positive person on the planet that I would ever meet in my lifetime. That was a decision I made. 30 oh, years. I, I hope I'm going to give you a run for your money there. Well, you're going to have to work <laughs> at it. That right. but first, I'm willing. <laughs> I'm willing to work at it. Yeah, so I have done that. And I see, you know, I mean, you know, you know, as, as um, Napoleon Hill says, with every adversity, there's equal greater benefit if you're looking for it, which is, I think, the part that most people don't think about. You need to be looking for it. And there always is. There's no question about it. I mean, even the things that you think are the most tragic. In the end, there's something to be gained from that that can help you going forward, you know. And so I think having that mindset, I think the other thing, too, is having a a, a thought. I've always thought, you know, I've made a decision in advance when something adverse happens that I was how to react. I think you need to make that decision in advance and before it actually happens so that you know what you're going to do when when that inevitable issue comes up. And I think that's a, a part where most people they think life is happening to them and they don't realize they're creating it. And um, so they think they're disempowered as a result of that. But the reality is we're creating every single thing that's happening in our life all the time, whether we realize it or not. Oh, there's no, no question. question. No question in my mind either. I'm, I'm not a secret guy. I mean, I, I definitely believe that what you put out into the universe comes back, but I think it's, it's coupled with action though. I mean, and if you act things, things tend to start working in your direction. Especially massive action. And so you had a little bit of adversity uh, as a young man. Yep. And and that shapes you, and then you have a different challenges later on. And Yeah, I've had 
kinds of challenges. You know, you know, when I got when I started my business originally, uh, I had already started. I was working in the jewelry business, but I had actually started a retail um, fine chocolate. I had a fine chocolate store. My wife and I, my wife Jan, and it was in the Westwood Village and in, in right, you know, adjacent to UCLA. And uh, we had that store going on. And when I found Primerica, I decided to sell that. I had a partner, and I decided to sell our business. Um, to our partner, so we had an agreement, wrote, had written it by you know attorneys, and then um, I quit my job to go full time in Primerica, and um, was supposed to get paid you know the money that were, was owed to you know to retire some debt we had, and they didn't they didn't pay us, and then they uh, I had to sue them. It took three years. This is this this is when I was starting my Primerica business right at the same time. So I quit my fifty five thousand dollar year job. My income got cut in half. I'm suing these people. Um, they owed me twenty thousand dollars, which was a lot of money to me at that point in my life. Like it, was, it could have been two million at that point. It was a lot of money. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I had borrowed all the money on credit cards, by the way. So I was paying a ridiculous interest rate on that. They didn't pay us. I sued them. I won the suit three years later after paying an attorney for three years, and they filed bankruptcy, and I never got a dime out of it. So that's how I started my career in Primerica with that. And so, you know, nobody knew that. I'd never told anybody that was happening, you know, but it was, it was a very stressful time for us. And, uh, but you have a decision, you know, to make, right? What are you going to do? You're going to tuck your tail between your legs and, and quit, or you're going to fight. And that's what, what I did. And, and I, and it turned out to be one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me. Like I said, you know, their adversity, right? It's for people a greater benefit. And one thing is, um, you know, I found out what I could do, really do, if my back was against the wall, and that there's no there's no hill to climb, you know, new, new tall to climb, you know. So, I think people think when things are happening to them, they're the only one that it's happening to, and nobody's heard this this struggle before in their life, and it's BS, you know. The reality is, everybody, every every, I've read hundreds of autobiographies, as I know you have as well. Every single one to a person has had struggles in their lifetime before they made it. Every single one. That's what makes and them worth reading. Yeah, and and you see that I read all so many of these, and I just went, you know, that's part of the part of the equation. It's part of the process. You know, everybody has them. It's not that you have it; it's what you do with it or about it that makes a difference. And so, um, you know, it's it comes back to the thinking process and, and being mentally tough, and uh, you know, just keep moving forward, regardless of what when everything seems like it's fallen to heck in a hang basket, you just keep driving forward. You know. And it sounds easy or like it's a cliche, but, but in reality, that's what every one of us that's won has done, including you. I know there's no question about that. What, I mean, what's your choice? It's the Winston have, Churchill quote, when you're, when you're going through hell, keep going. I mean, just, just keep going. You get to the other side at some point. Right, exactly. You can't keep getting off at every off-ramp. You know, never get there if you do that. No, you don't want to wallow there. Just move on. I appreciate you being here. We're at uh, about 28 minutes. I think people are going to now want to go look at you and say, well, who is this guy that Anthony brought on if they don't know you? Where do we point them to find well, out more about you and to, to get some of your wisdom? We can follow me at, on Twitter. My handle is Hector Lamarck. And uh, so I've got a lot of people following me there. I, I put stuff out every day, uh, you know, probably five to ten tweets of just all personal development stuff. And then um, I have a website, hectorlamarck.com. And, uh, and then you can, you can call, they can listen to my weekly call as well. I have a weekly call. Uh, you know, let me, get, let me give you the phone number real quick before I, 951, I know that. I don't, I don't have it memorized. Uh, just a second. I apologize. It's worth waiting for. Okay, yeah, it is. It's a it's a really good call. I put a lot of effort into it, and most of, a lot of it's your stuff that I'm just. It's clear that you put the effort into it, though, because y you've researched it, and you can go deep into. I mean, I might write 500 words about it, but you're going a half hour. You're going deep into every topic. Yeah, yeah. I, yes, usually it's a half hour to 45 minutes. It's uh, nine five one two six two three seven zero two. And it's a free call. Uh, new 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 call is posted every Tuesday, so it's Tuesday, Tuesday, twenty four hours a day. It's available for free. 
Brand we will name. we'll put that in the show notes and uh, and point people there. Thanks so much for being here. You're very welcome. I appreciate all you do, Anthony. You're, you're, you're amazing. He is Hector Lamarck, and you can see why I love him so much. You can find him at HectorLamarck.com. I'm Anthony Anarino. You can find me at TheSalesBlog.com. When you go, please do sign up for the newsletter. It is the best content I create every week. I'll see you next week right here in the arena.